In today's show, we're going to talk about the PowerShell if statement. While you may have used it or may have copied some off the internet here and there, today I want to dive into it and look at all the pieces. So if, else if, else, uh, look at the not operators, look at the different comparison operators, talk about some of the formatting things, just kind of make sure that you're really more comfortable with if so you can get the most out of it in your PowerShell scripts. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Who's fired up to learn something new? Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And today's show is all about the if statement with PowerShell. It's one of those commandlets that we use a lot, right? If you think about any of the scripting or any of the programming you've ever done, it's a very traditional if then type of scenario because that's how you process information at scale. So what we want to do with this video is walk you through how to use the if statement inside of PowerShell all the different components of it, and then just little nooks and crannies, things that you can kind of look out for, or things you can use to do a little bit better job with it. Should be a pretty fun video. We're gonna hopefully not make it too long because let's, be fa let's face it, there's a lot going on here, so it might be. All right, well, let's just switch over to my desktop. And while I switched over to the ISE here, my dog started barking. Thankfully, I went and stopped the dog from barking and cut that out so you don't have to hear that. All right, so here in the ISE though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the beginning. And I've decided to do it this way so that, that way it's all kind of here. It's easier for you to see. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just set myself a variable to one, right? So run that selection. Yay, variable equals one. And so let's write our first if statement. And so we're just going to run this little guy. And let's talk about what it does. So if. So in PowerShell, you just literally type the word if. And then whatever you want to evaluate, you're going to put that into a, a set of parentheses. So if variable, right, the variable I just created, equals one, so, right, that's this little section. What we're going to do here is we're going to then go and process whatever's inside the curly brackets that follow the parentheses. And in this case, we're just going to write host, we evaluated true, because that's what we're checking for. Does this evaluate to true? Uh, now, one of the important things to learn here, and we'll talk about more as we go, but here I did a dash EQ. All right, so you want to do dash EQ for dash equals, and then we'll talk about all the other ones, less than, greater than, that type of stuff. But anytime you're doing a comparison operator inside of PowerShell, you need to do so in this, from the standpoint of writing words. You're not trying to do assignment, you're not trying to do math, so don't use math symbols. Because what happens, so we see that this works, right? Yay. What if we go in here and we set this to two? And so if we run this now, what happens? It doesn't run, right? Nothing is returned because there was it was it didn't evaluate true, right? Variable does not equal one; it equals two. But what happens if we take this same statement and we change this dash eq? Right? We weren't paying attention, and I literally make this mistake probably once a month. I say dollar sign var equals one right host we evaluate true. What's going to happen when we run this line? Well, it's going to evaluate true, right? Because what happened? It didn't go and see if var was equal to one. It just set it to one. I said, yep, that's true. I, I did that. All right, if we type in dollar sign var here, you'll see that the value is one, even though we had set it to two. So don't use equal signs. Don't use math operators up here. This is always going to be words when you're doing an if statement. All right. So let's set our variable back to two. And let's go down here. And so let's look at how you use else. So in power or in uh, if though you know it's always you always think all right if then right there's even a whole website called if then um, but in PowerShell the then is understood um, right because it's if this thing then do this uh, bracket or curly brace thing but we can also introduce the concept of an else so if this isn't correct then else go do this thing so let's run this line and see what happens. All right, if var equals one, well, it's not true, so it's gonna be false. So we won't do this. We're gonna do the else statement, which is write host, we evaluate false. And there you go, you can see on the screen, we wrote, we evaluate false. Pretty easy, pretty cool. All right, so now this is the same exact thing, these four lines, but what I did here was I kind of showed you the beginning of breaking it up because one of the things that you're going to find out as you start to write more PowerShell scripts is you're going to have these if statements that are giant, right? I might be if uh, document type is X, go do these 45 steps. And if you're trying to write that in one giant long line, it doesn't work. So what we always try and do with uh, these statements is we're going to write them in more of a um, format like this. So these four lines, 
we'll execute it just to show you, we evaluate false, is the equivalent of the same one liner up here above. This is just giving us more uh, spacing. We're also gonna look as we go further down how it, you can even format it a little nicer so it's easier to read, but wanted to show you this because this is kind of that step one. All right, good, good. So rolling along here, um, so you can too get help about comparison operators to see all the different comparison operators and read lots and lots of text about them. There's also a, a Microsoft document that has it in on the web, so I will put a link to that down in the description below. But here are the five uh, comparison operators that I use the most, right? So if equals, if dash LT for less than, GT for greater than, less than, or LE for less than and equal, and GE for greater than or equal to. So those are the ones that I find myself using the most. So I went ahead and put those here in the, uh, the document. There are additional ones for doing things like matching and containings and types and that type of stuff. I don't want to get into that because we'd spend a whole video just covering the comparison operators. But generally know that, remember, that if you're going to evaluate stuff, we want to be using letters, right? We want to be typing dash EQ, not the equal sign. And pretty much any type of evaluation you want to do, PowerShell's probably got a built-in way to do it. So it shouldn't be too bad. And so then here is an example of one where, um, let's clear our screen off real quick. So here's an example of one that I did, right? If bar is dash LT less than 10, right host, we evaluated true. And we know that var is two right now, so it evaluated less than uh, 10, okay? So that's the comparison operators. Now the other thing to remember is kind of pick up my words earlier. What I said, essentially what we're trying to do is evaluate if what's in the parentheses is um, true. So for example, you'll see this sometimes. If parentheses var, then right host, we evaluate true. And if we run this line, it evaluates true. Why? Because it's essentially just saying, is var a thing? Yes, it is. So move on. So where you see that the most is um, in the case of errors, right? So if we do like right here, I'll do uh, right hose. This is not an actual command, all right? So, oh, error, oh, I broke. Okay, no problem. Well, we know that that stored the error in the error variable. So now if I say if error, then write our error is, and boom, because this is a common thing that you do in your scripts. You know, you do a bunch of stuff, you check for an error. If you have an error, then you go and do some error actions. So we'll run this line. And you can see that if error is error, boom, and look, and it says our error is the term right host is not recognized. So we were able to get the error back by calling the error variable. Um, and if we create, let's create another error real quick. So we'll type in, um, yeah, that, that looks like a command like, Doo. Okay, so now what we would see is an error variable is actually a collection, right? It's a collection of uh, all the errors that have happened uh, since the last time I started PowerShell. So now I have more than one in there. So another thing you might want to do is I will say here, if error, write host, our last error is, and then error, and then the brackets zero, that allows you to specify I want just the last error, right? Because it's the item in the zero location. So if we run this line, we'll see we just get... Uh, the term is worse, whereas when we ran this line, right, this is gonna return all the errors. So that one we get the term is worse, and then somewhere in here the term right, I should use words that are easier to say, uh, host is not in there as well. So a way for you to look at the different errors, and then obviously like with this one, because we know there's an error in the one location also, we could change this, and so then there is the uh, right host uh, error. So that's a common way I use the if statement is with errors. But so look, if I do here, um, run this line, this will clear out all the errors. And so then now if I do write host our error is, execute that line, nothing happens, right? It doesn't say our error is and then blank because if error evaluate to false because there's nothing in error, so it's not, it's not there, so it's like false, it's not a thing. And so then write our host is error. So good way to look at that. So speaking of not errors, uh, one of the other operators with the if statement is you can always do the negative, the opposite, right? The not, if you will. And so here this says if not error. So right, so if this if if error, if it's not an error, evaluates to true, then right host we didn't have any errors. So if we do that, you can see we didn't have any errors. So that one's a little weird, right? Because you have to think in pieces there because it's like all right, if the, if there's not a variable error, 
that that is true, right? Because parentheses means that if the thing inside of here is true, whether or not you like it or not. So if that evaluates to true, and in this case, not error evaluates to true, which is weird, right? A, a false evaluates to true, but that's the reason we use that dash not. Um, so if not error, write host, we didn't have any errors. Now, you also will sometimes see that written in this syntax. I would never recommend that you do it, but I wanted to show it to you because it's very common on the uh, internet when you're Googling for scripts and things like that. This um, exclamation point is the same, it's the alias for this dash not. So if exclamation point error, it's gonna evaluate the same thing, we get the same results. I would not recommend you using it because even though it makes complete sense once you understand it, for that next guy, it's really hard to understand why is there a exclamation dollar sign? That doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. So whereas if you say is not, they're like, oh, I get it, right? The, uh, what was that? The Simpsons, right? Not. Um, that was weird, sorry. Anyway, okay, so then here, let's do, um, I'll run my fake commandlet again, so we'll execute that. So I got an error again. And so then now if we run this line, we don't get any results because if not error is false because there is an error. So very weird. All right, so keep that in mind. This is where you know your, uh, your logic skills really come into. We start writing these complex PowerShell scripts. You gotta be able to think in sequential order like that and that's a great example of it. So another very common thing that comes up in my PowerShell scripts is I need to do multiple uh, checks. So for example, in this one, if not error and var equals to, write everything is true. All right, let's execute this. And so we can see that that does not execute to true, right? Because we do have an error. So if I took the error out, and then let's execute this line again, everything is true, right? So what this is saying is this thing needs to be true, so whatever's on this side, and, that's the dash and, the uh, operate on this side needs to be uh, true also. So if there is an error and var equals two, then do uh, your thing, right? And you can have it, you can have multiple comparisons. So it could be if var is, um, see I almost typed in a greater than symbol, greater than uh, zero and var equals two, Right, which I think we would know means it's two. It would be a silly thing to do, but this is valid. And so everything is true, right? Because our variable is two, so it's greater than zero, check. And our variable is equal to two, check. So write host, everything is true. Um, in addition to and, you can also use or. So if var is greater than 10, that would be false or var equals two, that would be true. So one of these evaluated true, right here, host everything is true. So let's hit go, just make sure Shane's right. Everything is true. Uh, so right here, you can do the, the dash or, or the dash uh, and. There's actually a whole bunch of different commands you can do or options you can run. So if you do type in the dash, right, it's gonna show you all of them. Once again, I'm not gonna get into all of them. Some of them are case sensitive, some are case insensitive, binary, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. But generally speaking, because I'm not a smart person, I use dash and or in dash or for my uh, tip, different things. All right. So that is that one. All right. So then the next thing I want to show you here is uh, there's a couple of things going on here. Right. We're back to our longer format because this is more traditionally what you're going to see in my scripts. So if var is equal to two, which it is, write host. Variable was two. Um, so then ends that. But I introduced something new here else if. So what this is, is this isn't else, which you're used to, but it's an else if. So it's going to be like, all right, if this is true, no, uh, it's not, then go try this. And if this is true, nope, it's not, then it's going to go do the else, right? So the else is kind of like a catch here, if you will, because we're going to evaluate all these else ifs. And then if none of these statements do true, then we're going to run this guy at the end, all right? So if we take this right now and run it, let's highlight all that. We'll run it, we'll see variable was two, that was our output. If we say dollar sign var equals four or five, I can't even read my own writing, say var equals five, and now we run this, we'll see variable was not two or three. If we hit up arrow, change our variable to three, run this again, variable was three. 
right? Because it's going to evaluate and it's only going to do one of these three. So it's going to try this one. If var equals two, it's now, nope, got to skip that. So it goes to the end of the uh, curly here. It says, all right, else if is var equal three. Hey, yes, it does. Right host variable is three. And then it would skip over this else because it evaluated one of the previous statements is true. You can also have multiple else ifs, right? So go back in here, we'll say else if uh, var equals um, five. Oh, what did I forget? Forgot my parentheses. Whoop. Put those right there. Go in here. We'll do a little tab in. We'll say write host variable was five. We'll close out our curly braces. And so then now we'll run this again. Run that. All right, so our variable is still three. And so then now we'll change our variable back to five. And now we'll run this again. Variable was five. So you can even stack multiple else ifs. So you can end up in scenarios where you've got lots of ifs. You know, in my case, like when I did the uh, reporting services migration project, it was like, you know, if report type was uh, report, then do this. If report type was subscription, do this. If report type was this. And so I just had a different uh, steps through there and kind of was how I worked through. And then my else in that case was write an error message. Oh, you didn't catch anything. That's bad news, buddy. I usually end up with error messages like that, very personal, uh, very uh, written messages. So this is an overview, hopefully, of all the different things you can do with if. Um, also, remember, you can always do get-help about underscore if, if you want to see the Microsoft documentation. There's millions of blog posts online with if. But I hope this if introduction kind of gets you guys going and thinking about the possibilities, because we're going to just keep building these little pieces and so hopefully in uh, future videos, we're going to end up with really complex scripts and we're going to be able to leverage things like our ifs and our arrays and our uh, for each objects and, you know, and look at how we actually kind of put all this together into one big scoop. But before we do that, we kind of got to get through these core topics. So um, if you remember, hit the old subscribe button or the like button over here. I'm a big fan of those. They always keep me motivated. Uh, if I can do anything to help you, reach out to me on Twitter at Shane's Cows. Or if you need help writing scripts like I do for other people, uh, you can always hit me up on Bold Zebras. So thanks and have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Might stop the recording.